Hi everybody, this is Tolkien for a new items video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about mage mythics. Not all mage items, just the mythics, because there are seven of them and it's already a high complexity. Analyzing them is already uh, pretty hard. So, the first and uh, cheapest option is Everfrost. It gives you AP, HP, mana, ability, haste, damage on ability, and CC. And it does all of that at the, the best cost for uh, a mythic. Looking at all of this, uh, Everfrost is the best baseline AP item. It, it's okay on almost every champion that wants AP. Uh, the root has a decent range. So you can almost never go wrong buying Everfrost. That's really the baseline of AP Mythics. Then at the same price point, you have Crone of the Shattered Queen. It gives you less HP and gives you a passive that's when you're getting hit, you take less damage for 1.5 seconds, then it has a 40 seconds cooldown. This is an item that's being heavily overbought at the moment. It doesn't have a good gold efficiency compared to other mythics, and you really need to be getting a lot of value out of this passive to uh, make it worthwhile. If this passive makes you survive in a fight where you would uh, otherwise have died, if the gameplay pattern makes it so, this item is a game changer, which does happen against assassins in particular, but assassins, for example, don't really see uh, much play in pro play, then this can be a good item. But for example, even against poke, it has a 40 seconds cooldown. You're not gonna magically uh, survive against uh, a Jace poke in your team because you have Crone of the Shattered Queen. It doesn't really change the gameplay patterns uh, there. It really is a highly specific item that is currently being bought by everybody in every situation, and that's terrible. Then you have Ludens Tempest. Ludens Tempest is a damage only <laughs> Uh, item. There's literally nothing else. It has high AP, magic penetration, uh, an ability that procs regularly, adding damage, but it doesn't give any move speed, any mobility, any CC compared to the others, but it's good at what it does. It's good as being uh, the best flat out damage option, especially against squishies, since, thanks to the magic penetration you get as the mythic passive as well. So it's the glass cannon uh, item and that's the end of it. The glass cannon item to build, to kill all the glass cannons as well. Because then we have Landry's Anguish, which is the same set of stats, but a different passive. And looking at Landry's Anguish in a very favored position, it does look good. And this position is when there are lots of enemies with bonus HP. The real value of Landry's Anguish comes from the person damage increase you get when enemies have bonus HP. It's very good if more than two of the opponents have bonus HP and the max HP burn is also decent if you can apply it at long range and repeatedly. So, Landry's Anguish is a weird item in that it's also a damage on the item that requires you to stay, to stay in a fight longer and has specific enemy targets it adds damage against. So it's hard to recommend it because it's not really good in the early to mid game. It's better on three and four items because you have a max HP burn, which becomes better as the game progresses. And uh, it's, it's a weird item because mythics, all the other mythics create a huge power spike at the moment they're about. They're great on one A2 item and two items, whereas Landry's Anguish gets better in the late game and adds a lot of damage if you are able to hit multiple targets with this, your spells. But on two items, in a generic situation, it's just not very good. It really needs to have specific opponents with bonus HP that it wants to hit and the game to go a bit longer to be great. Looking at Rocket Belt. Rocket Belt uh, is part of the three mythic items without mana. So it's not exactly the same target. You cannot go for a tier build really with uh, those items, but exact Rocket Belt is great value for it cost, its cost. I think Exec Rocket Belt is one of the reasons why champions like Echo, Diana are all playable right now, Rumble as well. It gives a lot of damage in AoE on a short cooldown, plus very good stats. It is 90 AP, which is the most AP of any uh, Mythic. And all, all in all, it creates a great damage package with uh, mobility if you do not need mana. That's the big uh, difference with Ludens Echo. Ludens Echo is better if you plan to go into a tier build later because it's going to add more damage since, thanks to the 600 mana uh, transforming into ability haste 
or AD, depending on which tier item you make. Whereas Exec Rocket Belt is going to give you a bigger spike because it gives you more AP, uh, a good active, and the mobility. So I think it's pretty close between Exec Rocket Belt and Ludens Echo as a damage focused item, and it's really uh, depending on if you want the mana or not. Looking at Night Harvester, though, it's not as good because assuming the perfect situation for Night Harvester, uh, getting the proc on three champions, it's about the same as Rocket Belt without giving you the dash, which is a huge part of the item. So it has a good damage output and the high AP of the Rocket Belt, but doesn't have a very good mythic passive as well. Five ability haste is nothing like five magic penetration, gives you move speed instead of a dash. And also a lot of its gold value is in the 300 HP. So Night Harvester right now just doesn't look good. If you want damage, and you want, um, and you don't need mana, Rocket Belt is, in my opinion, so much better than Night Harvester, doesn't really ever make sense. And we're gonna close it out with Rift Maker, which is a bit of a weird item, but I think it does, it, it is better than most people think. A lot of the item's gold price goes into uh, the tankiness it offers, because it gives you Omnivamp as well as 300 HP. But uh, the 9% bonus damage as true damage can be huge. Uh, you only need to hit once and then hit other spells, your rotation, after three after three seconds where you have the max procs and then you can stay at max procs for uh, the duration of the fight. So I think Rift Maker is getting slightly underplayed compared to the damage it can add uh, through the passive, but I'm not entirely sure uh, on which mages would want a Rift Maker right now. It's really an item that makes you survive for longer, and if you can hit one spell, then wait two or three seconds before the second rotation, then the 9% true damage uh, increase is really insane. But it's really a specific pattern, because it doesn't really work with poke, it doesn't really work with assassins, so I'm not sure if there are any champions in League of Legends right now who can really make use of this play pattern where Rift Maker is good. So that's gonna be it for the seven AP Mythics. I'm gonna come back tomorrow with a video on the other AP items and the analysis of the gold efficiency. So don't forget to tune back tomorrow and we're gonna take a look at when you should buy that Void stuff. Have a good day.